Hi again then guys, and so I just wanted to quickly drop this video for those who perhaps didn't know or who maybe don't follow GT Planet or various other websites that we have now had it confirmed, basically, that they are adding the first DLC content to Gran Turismo Sport. And not only is it a bunch of new cars, which is always cool in general, but some of the cars, in terms of what they represent, are very significant, and also it goes beyond just cars also. Because included in this pack are not only some slightly older vehicles than those which we currently have, such as the Ferrari Enzo, the 70s Lamborghini Countach, the KTM Crossbow, the FD RX7, both the R32 and R34 Skylines, the Volkswagen Samba bus even, and even a 2013 SEMA Gran Turismo award-winning show car, a Chevy Nova, but also stuff like the newer shape Audi R18, LMP machine, and the Shelby Cobra. Now, I love the Cobra, but beyond just being a cool car, that, along with a couple of others, are very significant for those of us who play Gran Turismo Sport who were wondering, where are the classics? We want more classics in the game. Well, Polyphony has answered, or at least they've begun to. Now, the cars look fantastic, the three that we've seen in particular, and one of those three is a whole new Vision GT car. Now, I've noticed more recently in the world of Gran Turismo Sport that there have been far more comments from people saying, oh, what's with all these Vision GT cars? Why don't they add real cars instead? I'm not sure why these people are only just noticing that. That's not exactly new to the franchise. There are a ton of Vision GT cars on GT6. So this literally is nothing new. Why people have only just started to notice, I do not know. Plus, at the end of the day, a new car is a new car. Who cares if it's fictional or not? However, we do have a new Vision GT car coming to the game. The Isso Revolta, designed by Zagato, is coming to Gran Turismo. A car which is, well, let's just say controversially styled, to say the least. But I'm personally looking forward to this one more, though, because I'm a huge fan of Isso as a brand, rather than because I'm looking forward to the car specifically. Of course, I am looking forward to it, but the Isso Griffo is one of my favourite classic cars. It's basically Italy's equivalent to the Jensen Interceptor, and it's an awesome GT machine, one of the fastest GT-style classics ever made. Plus, you've got the Cobra in there, you've got the classic C3 generation Corvette convertible, even a Ferrari F40. And, of course, lest us not forget, we have our first truck in the world of Gran Turismo Sport. And not only is it our first truck, it's a brand new one, because it's a Ford F150 SVT, but it's not the SVT Lightning, which, of course, we've had for a number of years. It's the Raptor, which is pretty awesome to finally have that car in the game, and also for that to be the first truck of Gran Turismo Sport. That's pretty cool, I think. So I just wanted to give you guys this quick update, as I said, for those who maybe aren't following various websites online. And it's certainly fantastic news, but beyond the cars, they are also addressing something else, which of course has been well, commented on quite a bit, let's say, even by myself here on the channel, the lack of a normal career mode or campaign mode or story mode, whatever you want to call it. They have begun to address that because they're adding new events. And again, that's awesome to see, especially with the addition of new classes of vehicles, such as classics and trucks. It's nice to actually have some use for those beyond just the same old online races and custom races that you create for yourself. So that's pretty awesome that they're doing that. And apparently by roughly March of next year, they are planning to add about 50 new cars by that time. Now, of course, Polyphony is notorious for not hitting deadlines, but given that Kaz did promise to have DLC very quickly, and we are pretty soon after the release of the game, it's not much more than a month, it's pretty impressive that we've got our first edition of basically 15 vehicles plus new career mode content. So, my predictions from back when we started playing the game have proven to be true. It's not just new cars, but they are expanding the game itself, making it bigger, which is what I assume that they would do, because that makes sense. You have this centralized hub 
which is basically the way that Gran Turismo 6 did things, and then you add these interchangeable sockets, if you will, into the game, which make it bigger over time. So it rewards those who play the game over the time of its production, but at the same time, if you start playing early, you can kind of see the metamorphosis of the game through its production run, like we did with Gran Turismo 6, and to some degree, with GT5 as well. So it's pretty cool, certainly going in the right direction, and it will give both those of us who are already playing the game a lot more impetus to do so, and for those who have maybe dropped off a bit after completing all of the missions and license tests and all that kind of stuff, a reason to come back and play it more. And that's pretty cool. So I just wanted to, do, as I said, give you guys that quick update, and it's certainly excellent news. But that's it overall. Of course, if you are new to the channel, you can hit sub down below to keep up with news like this as soon as it's released. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.